venture down to the locker room and coach Cliff Godwin is now downstairs as the Pirates win this one seven to four here tonight and coach there's a lot to like after this game here tonight let me ask you about your starting pitcher because you told me before the game you just had a gut feeling he was going to pitch really well here tonight and boy did he ever. I just know Cooch. I know he's a competitor. I said this a few weeks ago. He's a winner. He's won his entire life, and I just felt good about it. And I normally don't say stuff like that to you, Corey, but I told you that. I guess it was off the air, but I felt pretty good that Cooch was going to go out there and be Cooch, and he was really good, and he gave us a great opportunity to win. And, and, and then Gavin, you know, came in behind him and did a tremendous job. 15 strikeouts, no freebies. We've been – Harpin or Coach Dietrich and Coach Knight have been harping on the pitchers about limiting the freebies and to punch punch out 15 guys and not walk anybody it was pretty special. Cliff, uh, several guys who produced for us all year were not the uh, the mainstays tonight. Instead, it was seven, eight, and nine. World, Newton, and Giles all collecting eight hits of uh, eight hits collectively. Yeah, Bryson's been his at bats have been a lot better the past 10 days. And I knew it was coming. You just don't know when it's going to come, but it came tonight. Uh, of course, Ben Newton had a great night. Of course, Ryder had a great night. So it really links and lengthens our lineup when those guys are swinging the back good. They did a great job. And I just told our team that everybody's not going to be hot all the time. So guys have to pick each other up. And Bryson, Ben, and Ryder uh, picked those guys up tonight. Yeah, when the bottom of the order is doing what they did tonight, you know, Connor's been sensational this year. Seth Cadell's been sensational this year. You have Thomas Francisco in the middle of your lineup going three, three for four, getting on four times. But when that bottom three of the order is doing what they did tonight, this team's going to be almost unbeatable. Well, I, don't, I don't know about unbeatable, Corey. I appreciate you saying that. But uh, Moylan had two line drives as well. Uh, also, Nor Norby hit the ball hard twice. You know, that's the thing you, you can't see in a box score. And Franny had quality at bats. Uh, Zach walked a couple times. Uh, so those are the things we just got to keep keeping our approach, keep the chain connected, whatever our approach is. And I thought our guys were good. A lot of two out RBIs as well. Yeah, this this one had to feel great to open up this weekend, Coach. And what a great way to start off this weekend against a team that's coming in red hot. We will see you tomorrow for game two. All right. Thanks, Corey. Thanks, Coach O. Hey guys, we're going to open up the questions for Coach Godwin. Make sure you turn your microphones off if you are not asking a question. Thank you. Get them, Malcolm. Coach, start off when Coach Manor came out of the game. He had a huge standing ovation by the crowd, and it's probably the most lively crowd we've seen so far this year. Just how much more did that mean after going so long without the fans? It was awesome. I knew, of course, Cooch staring at me. He didn't want to come out, but he was in the 90-ish pitch count. Uh, how many pitches did he throw here? Uh, 93. So we were going to let him go to 100, but just with that long at bat, the last guy I had, and he just was out there, just thought it was a good time to go to Gavin and uh, get Cooch a little standing O, which is always awesome for a guy that's gone out there and done his job to get a standing O by Pirate Nation. You touched on when you talk to them at some year, 15 strikeouts and no walks. Uh, just how impressive that on a Friday night, especially kind of. Ronnie, you kind of broke up a little bit, but I'm going to go with this. They they like to swing. They're, they're into trying to hit balls out of the yard a lot. So Cooch did a really good job of locating his fastball, locating his changeup, mixing a breaking ball in every once in a while. And then, you know, Guy gets a good swing on Gavin's first fastball, which Gavin would tell you was right down the middle. And the guy's one of the best hitters in the country and put a good swing on it. But Gavin pitched tonight. I mean, he threw four pitches for strikes. And really, I was worried about the inning that they kept changing pitchers. And he just kept sitting around. And then he was out there throwing 97 miles an hour with three all-speed pitches. So really great to see him be able to pitch and also no freebies. So it was really good by Cooch and Gab just to, you know, keep our, the rest of the bullpen fresh for the rest of the weekend. Coach, can you elaborate a little bit on Ben Newton's performance at the play tonight? He's seeing the ball really good, and he's starting to believe he's a good hitter. 
and he's really just solidified himself to, to be in the lineup every day. It doesn't matter if it's lefties or righties. You know, they brought the lefty in to face him, and he smacks a single to, to left field. He's got a really short, simple swing. And him and I have worked a lot over the past two years, and, and he would tell you, as Bryant Packer told me, that that's the best hitting job I've ever done. So that's coming from Bryant Packer, uh, you know, seeing the development of Ben Newton. But all the credit goes to Ben Newton for buying into coaching and now, uh, you know, his hard work's coming to fruition. Coach, you mentioned kind of Gavin, his ability to, to pitch tonight. It was obvious they were hunting the fast bar early. How good was it to see him kind of mix it up and, and you know, even throw some, some sliders, uh, two different breaking balls, and really get them off balance? His slider is the best it's ever been tonight consistently, along with the breaking ball. He threw a good change up to McCabe his second time that he faced him. Uh, it, it's just good because that's what he's going to have to do. And if we want to eventually move him into a starter's role, you got to have more than one pitch. And he's continued to develop, and we're excited to see him continue to develop those pitches. Coach Dietrich and Coach Knight and Gavin have worked really hard on those over the past year, and, and now it's showing up in the game, which is great to see. Coach, you touched on him a little bit earlier, but – Ryder Giles obviously got off to a little bit of a tough start this year at the plate. So just how much has it – how how great has his confidence gotten over the past couple of weeks, three consecutive two-hit games? Yeah. Well, well Jonathan, the, the first thing is uh, Ryder actually hit the ball really hard the first weekend as Bryson did but had nothing to show for it. So when you guys look at batting average, which I don't look at because you can't control batting average. It's the dumbest stat in the world in my opinion. But I didn't create baseball. So um, – but we talk about quality at bats and Ryder was just being a little tick underneath the baseball. Um, he's not a guy that's going to drive the ball to the yard. So we talked to him. I talked to him about a week ago. I said, Hey man, we need to start missing down. And now he's hitting those low line drives and ground balls that are getting through. And he's done a really good job selling out to it. And Ryder is still a great offensive player, in my opinion, along with one of the best shortstops I've ever coached. Okay, are there any other questions for Coach Godwin this evening? Okay, Coach, thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Here's the man you guys really want to talk to. What's up, Coach? How are you, buddy? Good. How you doing, Malcolm? Doing, doing well. All right, we'll go to questions for uh, Jake. <clears throat> Jake, it Jake, it seemed like, like the end of your outing, the last four or five batters, you were really kind of motivated. Um, how much did you want to just finish that out strong? Um, you know, we got some momentum going offensively. So uh, my thought process was just to flip the innings as quick as I could. Um, I knew that they were probably going to take some more pitches to get my pitch count up. So uh, Stump did a really good job all day calling the game. Um, so I thought I thought we had a good little rhythm there. And the yeah, like I said, the plan was to just get back in the dugout. So Jake, when you left the game, you obviously had a really big standing ovation by the crowd. Just how nice was that after going so long without him? Uh, it was cool. I mean, obviously it was, it was really cool to get some fans back in the stand and um, hear them all game, get going early. So um, yeah, really cool experience. Jake, what do you feel like was working particularly well for you tonight overall? Uh, just the rhythm we had going. I felt like, you know, their hitters were getting frustrated. And then um, Stump just calling a really good game, like I said, behind the plate. We had a really good plan. Um, and him just keeping – me and him were in sync all day. So, um, you know, that goes to Stump for, for what he did today behind the plate. Jake, it seemed like it was a pretty – big zone for both teams. Is that something you can kind of um, feed off of early in the game, kind of get a feel for and then pitch to that as it goes along? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, that's what you're looking for. If, um, you know, if you can start to inch inch off more and more and more um, and still get the call, then that's the goal. And then, uh, you know, communicate that to the offense. You know, that's that's what's going on. And I thought we did, we did a really good job of offensively um, – taking care of business and scoring runs. So I think we did a good job all around. Okay, are there any other questions for Jake this evening? All right, 
Jay, congratulations and thanks for your time. Thank you, guys. All right.